So that speaks volumes in relation to the support given by the management and the involvement of the teachers and the proper guidance by the teachers to the students and the students taking the best benefit of all these resources and help. Dear students, when we speak about the college day, we generally come across a particular aspect that is what we are going to get. So we are getting education. So as all of you are aware, let me just give you the my own definition of the term education. E stands for energy. So energy I am referring both physical energy and mental energy. Unless the students have a strong physique and also a very strong mentality, they cannot get the education. And D stands for the most important thing that is discipline. And according to me, discipline is imbibed to education because According to my own understanding and even what I have read, good number of books, discipline is the single word in English which gives hundred. I think I have explained how it gets hundred. Hundred. Therefore, discipline is considered to be the most important aspect in education. And according to me, education breathes discipline and discipline breathes education is urge the student should have the urge to learn or the inquisitiveness or the interest to study anything and the fourth one is character c stands for character and between character and conduct character character is one how we behave when nobody is observing us. Conduct is one which we behave when others are observing. So, C is including both character as well as the conduct. So, our behavior when nobody is observing and our behavior when others are observing. In both the cases, our character and conduct should be exemplary or it should be a landmark in our activity. And the fourth one is aptitude. Aptitude we mean the interest or the liking towards a particular course. Never be under the impression that BA is inferior or BCOM is in, uh, superior or BCA is still superior. Nothing. All the courses, whether it is engineering or medical or pharmacy or dental or uh, under graduation, everything is equal and only watch how the next activity or what will be the next activity. We shall not lose our temper, therefore we should have a tolerance. And the next one is I. I stand for we should be immersed in the learning process. I stand for immersed in the learning process. As a sponge gets immersed in the water, we should also get ourselves immersed in the education process. Inspires and motivates. And all the staff under the leadership of Professor Samuel K. Samuel are considered as the excellent teachers who have motivated and who have mobilized all the capacities and they have inspired all of you to get the best education and definitely I can say you are the luckiest to have this motivating excellent teachers. So I congratulate the principal and the staff and also the you because you are the beneficiaries and Particularly in the case of the education or the graduation, we come across two terms. One is information, another is knowledge. So let me just highlight what is meant by information and what is meant by knowledge. Information is what you get from the books. So from the various books you get the information. But knowledge you get only through teachers or your guides. They are called as the gurus. In the past, we, are, we had the system of Gurukula system where the disciples, they have to stay along with the Guru and learn everything and they were imparting knowledge and they were not imparting any information. 
So we can get the information from the papers, we can get the information from the books or from the internet, but we are not going to get the knowledge unless there is a right person to guide us and properly motivate us. <coughs> So that is very important that you have to understand the difference between education and the even getting the information and the knowledge. So just when I was referring to the obedience or completely 100% we have to be involved in that, I am just reminded of a small story drawn from Ramayana. So after Ramayana war was over and he was given the crown and when he was given the crown he wanted to greet and compliment everybody and he gave he invited everyone and he gave them and Sita was very guilty because Sita when she was in Ashokavana she got the complete clue about Rama from Hanuman so she was aware how Hanuman was and how he is devoted to a very a very important and very wealthy necklace from her neck and press for five minutes. Silently he observed that particular necklace which was having several jewels and he observed it for five minutes that particular necklace and everybody was shocked. What else? And he saw that particular pearl and he threw it. He thought to Hanuman and he completely smashed it and to be very frank they asked him why you, you have behaved like that? I just wanted to see whether there is the name of Sri Rama in any of the jewels or in any of the pearls and in any of the pearls I could see Sri Rama. So that is my devotion to Sri Rama. So only when we are devoted towards our studies, we are devoted towards our ambition and we are devoted towards our goal, we can achieve something in life. And that is why, according to our culture, we say, Guru, one more word of two words, sentence of two words. What is that? Thank you. So when we get any amount of help from others, we have to say thank you. And that is considered as the most powerful sentence of two words. And there is a sentence of three words. That is called, if you please. When we get or when we want somebody to help us, we have to say, if you please, can you please help me? So in that case, we have to use the word, if you please, we cannot command anybody. We have to just request them. And the letter of four words, sorry, sentence of four words. So the sentence of four words that, um, uh, <coughs> that is to say, what is your opinion? What is your opinion? When we exchange or when we get an idea from others, we cannot dictate our idea to others, but we have to get their idea also. Therefore, we have to always say, what is your opinion? So, for your inspiring and encouraging words. Now I invite Professor Matthew C. Nyman, Managing Trustee of Priority Education Foundation to make his remarks. Over to you, sir. Old students parents and dear students. I think you listened to a very, very powerful message. I wish we get similar messages on college days and school days. Sometimes speeches run long, but there will be no message. But today's chief guest was very powerful and we listened with rapt attention because he had a powerful message. But what I want to say is, it's not enough that we listen to good speeches. We should be able to remember the message that came across. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you questions, but you can yourself examine how much of it you remember. The chief guest gave an explanation to the word education and he explained each of those letters. If he had mentioned beforehand that after this speech I am going to put a test and I am going to give a prize, many of you, many of, many of you sitting here would have pulled out the paper and started writing. That is our motivation. If anything comes in return, 
then only we will take things seriously. Otherwise, we listen to the speeches out of courtesy. We listen or pretend to listen and we forget everything. Then he followed up with six sentences. Running with one word in a sentence to six words in a sentence. You can ask yourself how much of that you remember. Maybe if you make an effort, you will be able to write it down after this program this evening. If you do that, it would be nice. The point I want to make is that if you want to succeed in this world, you have to develop one important quality and that is to listen. I'm happy that the students of Crossland College do listen when a speech is being made. In many places even that doesn't happen. Youngsters do not listen. They go on talking. Even when they attend a meeting and sit in the audience, they go on talking endlessly. Even now perhaps some of you would be talking. Because nobody can come and make sure that you listen. Because listening is a purely voluntary activity. Listening is a purely voluntary activity. You can choose to listen or you can choose not to listen. Nobody can force you to listen. Listening is a purely voluntary activity. You will hear everything. You will hear whatever sounds are heard all around you. Even the road noise you will hear, but you may not listen to it. You listen to things you want to hear. It is a deliberate activity. Though it is involuntary, it's voluntary, you can choose or not to. The fact is that you need to decide to listen. For the sake of reading. If you ask many graduates how many of them read the day's newspaper, the answer can be very shocking. It need not be English newspaper, it can be a Canada newspaper or any vernacular newspaper. There are students and adults in the society who are literates but who don't read. The government, which means the taxpayer, is paying the cost of the education and we must know the value of what we get there for. So we must know that it's very important we listen, it's very important that we read. A college's atmosphere, such as the one that you have, is the greatest influence that can come upon you. Lots of researches have been undertaken on student achievement. What makes for student achievement? Lots of research and they have found out two important factors and they are one, the overall climate of the institution. That influences a student's learning. Then, classroom climate. What happens in the classroom? If in the classroom the teacher teaches well and the students listen actually and learn from that, that definitely guarantees student achievement. That we will do our part well uh, so that the college will have all the facilities in time and the teachers under the leadership of the principal will continue to do everything good for you and may the Lord bless you. Thank you. Thank you sir for your remarks. Now is the time for distributing the Endowment and Founders Academic Merit Awards. Now I request Professor Elizabeth Roy, Vice Principal of Degree Section, to read out the names of the award winners. Academic Merit Awards for the year 2010 level. I request Mrs. Rajarishmi Dikshati to give her the awards. I also request the students to come forward and receive the awards. Ranjit Matthews gets two awards. The second semester university examination in general studies. The student by Mr. Nomisha gets a Spanish business number. Pavita gets two awards. Ranjit P gets four awards. Arindras Tangama Philip Memorial Endowment for first and second semester management science. Jocelyn Jacob Matthews.
Sam Dave. Yes, and I will be seeing you again. Remia receives political credit Ethan Murphy's memorandum in for third and fourth semester social science institute by his son, Dr. Visit Jarian. Nathaniel Kiwagis Ashoka gets three hours. Kodima gets Reshma gets one hour. Anila Bibika Anusha Shankarami. Shweta Shetty. The following students get the Founders Academic Credit Award for obtaining highest marks in internet examinations for second highest in university examinations. New Dancer Summer. That's a two hours. Ready to That's a two hours for third semester Hindi and third semester Hanek. Abdul Founder. For first semester English. Divya Pujarthi for first semester Kannada. Jayalakshmi for first semester Social Science. Anna Bhurna, two hours for the management science and third and fourth semester English. Prakash Ajayi is for fifth semester Babu. First and second from English. Silas Dawn. Elsie Babu. For first and second. Bimsi Babu. For first and second from the Manian Science. Third and fourth from Social Science. Christy Dawn. Two hours. First from English and first from the highest. Vaishnavi, one hour, first semester Kannada. Saumya K, yes, one for 50 The following students, Sharath Nai, for the bronze medal. Shetika Ramakrishna, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I call upon Shishikri Bhatt, lecturer in charge of PUC section, to read out the names of the award winners. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of the faculty of Boston PUC College, I have great pleasure in presenting the Academic Credit Award winners of the year 2010. May I request Mr. Vaghi Jayan, correspondent PUC section, to give you the awards. This is Mariano Thomas Memorial Endowment instituted by the staff and faculty of Constant College for Secondary C Common to All Groups. The award goes to Timmy Premo, who scored 76.3%. Timmy Shetty and Timothy Sarasati Nishetty, Endowment for Secondary C Common. Reena John gets three awards. Endowment for Secondary C, 97 and 95. Mr. Abhira Maya Memorial Endowment for Constant C, instituted by the PUC College, 98 and 95. Current series of private work is with some issue by the second PC in 87 and 88. 69.5. Founders Academy of Parent Awards for first PC students obtaining the highest marks but not. Ashila gets two awards for social release 66%. Political science. Founders Academy Merit Awards for second PUC students obtaining the highest marks but not less than 50% in first PC promotion examination. Indian languages, Taita, 89%. Accountancy, Rakshita, 